Dan, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Rachel. How are you? Very well, thanks, and thank you for your time this morning. Mm. So, My pleasure. I'm going to fire straight in because I know that I've only got a short amount of time with yeah, you. Go for it. Um, so, firstly, I wanted to touch upon the fact that you're a local low stuff lad. That's right, yep. And um, I just wondered if those days at Kirkley High School seem like a distant memory to you. <laughs> well, that's, that's um, uh, no, okay, I still remember it vividly. I mean, I, I had a good time at Kirkley. Um, I had some really good teachers there, and and it was um, it was pretty pretty good fun. It's, um, yeah, it does seem like a very <laughs> long time ago there now. Was the be all and then all love is so so in case you hadn't gathered, the magazine is based around the East Anglian area. Um, so it's nice to be able to, to chat to someone obviously that's been around and look where you are now. So it's great. Yeah. So I think what well, it's amazing the amount of um, East Anglians we meet, you know, around the world. I bet. You know, and you know, it's amazing how many sort of fellow lowest Oftonians are doing so well in the music industry and, and um, there must be something in the water I think there is yeah <laughs> or, or maybe that inherent need to get out and do something yeah <laughs> up how did you actually get into music yourself oh well I mean um, well my, my parents were, were really into music and you know we play a lot of Bowie and mm -hmm. T-Rex T -Rex and Blondie and something um, so I guess that's where the initial thing and Queen as well um, so that's where the initial kind of thing came from but um, yeah I mean I went when I went to Pakefield Middle School um, they had like a music uh, cupboard there, like a music room, and it had drums and guitars and all sorts of things in. And I was the only one who ever really wanted to go in there, you know, <laughs> me and a, and a couple of friends of mine. I remember um, those cupboards quite so, vividly. Yeah. We had one of those too, and um, it was you were only allowed in there at certain times, if I remember. Mm. So it was. They almost more... like starve you of it, they which do. makes you even more hungry <laughs> to um, to get in there, you know. Because I, I, I was a drummer initially, you know, um, and I just loved drums and you know drum kits and I'm well, making loads of noise I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah and, and I ended up being um, I was the drummer for the for the school orchestra at Payfield Middle School um, when I was quite young actually. So and, that's where it all started? So yeah so I was in like um, you know I was playing with a lot of older kids and, and doing shows at um, churches and things like that. <laughs> shows. Before you formed The Darkness, um, you were in a couple of other bands too. Um, I've picked up on one called Empire. How did you form uh, the bands that you were in before and, and tell us more about that? Oh, well, I mean, you know, as any uh, musician will, will, um, will testify, you ha you have, you, you're always in the bands, but, you know, uh, sometimes you're in three, three <laughs> you know, it's like... Um, you're hedging your bets and you're trying to improve the band and then you know you'll jump ship and play with another band or whatever so i mean i must have been in maybe 10 bands when i, when I lived in Lowestoft. yeah um, and that that didn't really change when, when i moved to london i was always kind of um you know I, i'd be auditioning for one band while playing with another um and then sort of quitting them and you know going to write some other people so yeah i think it's just a the thing that generally happens, really, until you you find that perfect sort of um, mix. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you kind of you're always playing with different bands and, and different instruments as well. And so the darkness formed in the year 2000, if I'm correct. How did obviously because your your brother was in the band with you? How did that all come about? Well, um, the band just prior to the darkness, uh, which we called Empire. Yeah. Um, Justin was a keyboard player and um, sort of backup guitarist, I suppose. And um, we had this singer who was, um, he had a pretty good voice. You know, he had um, basically had stage fright and he couldn't deal with talking to an audience and he couldn't right. engage with them. So he was a little bit unlikable in one sense. Yeah, quite um, a downfall for a front man. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's where it doesn't always, 
There are a lot of shy frontmen who lose themselves and they don't like to interact with the audience, but yeah. it didn't really suit the kind of music we were making. Of course, yeah. So anyway, so my brother would do all the kind of showman bits, like, so we'd finish a song, the singer would go and have a drink of water and eat and try and, and not look at the, the audience. <laughs> and then my brother would be there sort of chatting away with the crowd and making jokes and, and um, announcements. And, and um, so he was sort of like doing the front man bit without the singing. Yeah, of course. And so we basically um, fired the, the, uh, the singer eventually, but we all got on so well, the rest of the band, that, and we stuck, we stuck it out and we auditioned singers for about two years mm -hmm. well my friends would never let me live it down you know um, that, 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 um, that Justin was there in the band the whole time <laughs> but, um, there in the background waiting to creep in <laughs> yeah so it goes around your nose sometimes isn't it? But, um, no but it was um, you know it's, it, it, it's one of those things where he, he never really showed any sort of um, never really was interested in being you know, the actual singer um, and so I can't remember how it ended up. You just sing, um, and um, and if it, even if it's terrible, we'll just stick at it. And if worst comes to worst, we'll just be the best Queen covers band. <laughs> um, luckily, I haven't come to that yet. No, that's good. <laughs> local connection you have with the Gillingham Swan? My um, my auntie used to own the Gillingham Swan. In fact, my cousin now does. Right, okay. Yeah, so we spent a lot of time there at family gatherings and stuff. And, and um, you know, we actually formed the band in that pub uh, on Millennium Eve, um, my brother and I. Um, and that was after he was sort of just, just dancing about to Bohemian Rhapsody. Again, not, still not singing. Still didn't know he could sing at that point. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so... So we do have a connection uh, with that with that pub, although yeah. we've never actually played there. Would you ever consider going there for a secret gig? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe one day. <laughs> who knows? It might be on the my cards. Son. As I say, as I say, my cousin John, who's an awesome guy, um, he runs it and he's, and he's doing a great job there. He's putting lots of interesting stuff on, like um, outdoor kind of events yeah. on the ground. You know, I could imagine doing something outdoory there. Maybe yeah. I certainly wouldn't like it else. Reference Black Shock in one of your songs, um, which was the mysterious beast that roamed Blythborough. One of the things that, um, you know, some of, the, some of the advice that, that you get from your peers when you're starting out and you're beginning to write your own songs, um, uh, it's to write about what you know, you know? Yeah. Um, so, obviously, my brother took that um, uh, literally. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so he, so he also wrote about um, uh, the Tolan Man. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. I remember that one. Uh, and, uh, and we're in the process of writing a song, song about Sutton Who. Oh, that's an really exclusive there. there. Um, yet to finish it, but hopefully it'll appear on the next album. Brilliant. It's kind of like drawn to all that kind of medieval, like sort of, um, and sort of ghostly folklore. And yeah. I don't know, it's just, um, uh, East Anglia is an amazing place historically, you know, where so many battles were thought, fought, you mm -hmm. know, and, and um, yeah, it's a, it's a, real, it's a real rich, rich history, so perfect for turning into hard rock songs. <laughs> Word is just around the corner, and by that I mean Christmas. What was it like to have a Christmas hit that you know will be played for years to come? Um, well, yeah, it was pretty nice. Keep, keeps the pool heated. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, of course. Um, that was, was the fun, other. You know, what, it's it's fun. You know, you know, the family kind of um, get excited when when um, you know when I appear on the TV. You know. I think you, you, it's very cool to like Christmas. Oh, I think it's very cool. So as, I think, you know, as long as we think it's cool, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. 
Um, and I have a very serious question. What is it like having to compete with your brother's outfits? Outfits? Yeah. I mean, this is quite a serious question. I mean, the well, darkness you, you know think what? of... I, you can't compete with him. Yeah. Outfit. I don't think anyone can. So, it's kind of... Um... Have you ever tried? Well, I gave it, I gave it my best shot. <laughs> where, um, I was, you know, on the last campaign, I, I had this sort of bright pink sort of um, three-piece suit made um, with like, you know, spangly flowers. On. But, uh, you know, but I realise now that, that that was a silly move, you know. It sounds pretty fabulous. My, my, my job is, um, is to stand at the back and just sort of knock out riffs, really, but um, <laughs> and leave the other guys to sort of um, fight over the limelight. <laughs> Darkness had a little bit of time out, and I just wondered during this time, what were you working on, um, and how did the darkness reform? Jo um, Justin went off to the solo project and, um, and was writing for some other artists. Um, I got heavily involved in production and mm -hmm. engineering records. And yeah. Um, I've always been obsessed by and, and um, you know so um, so I did a load of that um, you know produced two or three albums of other bands mm -hmm. started a different, another band as well called Stone Gods and, and um, yeah so we're all kind of busy really sort of just um, uh, just having time kind of away from each other <laughs> yeah medium, which is always healthy I guess when you've been together as a band for so long yeah well it was, it was all a bit intense you see it's all just very life changing and Mm. And really full on, and, and um, you know, I think we were just trying to keep up with what was happening to us, and yeah. sort of lost sight a bit of, of, um, of the important things like um, staying alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always, always uh, important to keep track of that. New album Pinewood Smiles is out now. Um, it is, yeah. For those who haven't heard it, what can they expect to hear? Um, mega rock. Yeah. <laughs> so would you say it's the darkness that we know and love, or is it something slightly different? Yeah. Well, I'd say it's probably. I'd say it's, it's darkness um, with, with with full mojo. Yeah. Wow. I'd say. I think you know we maybe we were scrabbling around trying to find it for a few few albums and um, and we found it now we've found, found the key to it all you've toured with some pretty amazing bands over your time um, most recently Guns N' Roses is that right yeah that's right yeah. is it hard to keep up the momentum when you're touring with such Sort of renowned and energetic rock bands like how do you keep up with that um you know I, I, we haven't played with a band yet i don't think that um that has as much energy on stage as we do right uh, that's great good to I think hear that's that thing i think that's i think most people ask us that question whether they're even whether they're, they're headlining or going on after us right yeah um you know it's uh it's nervous energy. I think that's the thing. Yeah. It's the fear of God that motivates us up there. I think. Well, do you know what? Someone, you've always got to have your motivation. So if it works for you, keep doing exactly. it. <laughs> Can't explain all the feelings that you're making me feel. Well, that nicely rolls me into my very last question, oh. Dan. And I just want to know: Do you believe in a thing called love? Of course. Of course. So there we go. Who doesn't? Really? Who doesn't? You know? If you don't feel love, you don't feel anything. Everyone can relate to that song. Touching you, God, you touch your Thank you so much for your time today, and um, best of luck the tour. We're really looking forward to, like I say, coming along to see it, oh, and yeah, uh, it. and seeing those costumes by the sound of it. Yeah, yeah you won't miss them. Though, <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> well, take care, Dan, and thank you again so much. Thanks a lot. All right. Yeah. Cheers. Bye. Bye.